Welcome, folks. Let's get to it. Irrelevant news. Deaf Dude, he likes to call himself a comedian, but he doesn't know what a joke sounds like. He's never been inside a comedy club. My building, my place, my rules. Deaf Noodles was a little upset about it. I invite you to come to my office to say it to my face. You know, it's not a crime to hold a bad comedy night, but you know what is a crime? Assault. I am taking every precaution I can take in the book to ensure that this is a safe event. My number one priority is to guarantee the safety of my guests and the town. And welcome to the roast battle, baby. Let's see if you can survive the heat. It's starting to feel like a bad idea. Deaf noodles or defamation noodles. <laughs> Jokes are deeply offensive. People should understand that having any sense of humor or any levity to life just makes it absolutely worse. Um, to be completely honest with you, I don't want to talk about it. So before the comments start, which they will start, I, I don't want to talk about it. There's no benefit to me talking about it. Why would I talk about it? I'm not talking about it. Everybody loves a good downfall. I know that better than anyone else with the downfall of my haircut. And so did Deaf Noodles. As a commentary channel, he reported on the downfall of others and he was quite successful doing it, but he probably never expected it to happen to him. Honestly, neither did I. But now he's wiped his entire channel, maybe in an attempt to run from his internet history, maybe out of shame, or maybe something worse. So join me as we visit the war-torn country known as Deaf Noodles, a place where people have been slandered, commentary channels have come and gone, and a man's online career was absolutely incinerated. What have I done? Was there any reason to do this? Why was I thinking that I should do this to, my, to myself? Deaf Noodles came onto the scene back in 2020 by making commentary videos about whatever was popular or trending at the time. But whereas I exist in a more edgy area of the internet, Deaf Noodles existed in a much more sensitive and considerate area known as the T community. You see, T channels are basically commentary channels. It's the same kind of content, but for women and gay people. And I don't say that in a derogatory way either, as much as I would love to. No, these are just channels that appeal to a broadly female and gay male audience, covering makeup drama and influencer drama in, in the female perspective basically there's a lot of uh yas queens and uh sleighs being used in there yes let me let me put you on the chalkboard From an archive of his channel, we can see him discussing people like James Charles, a 25-year-old makeup YouTuber. Toddy Westbrook, similar story there. Trisha Paytas, of course, who I know is the woman who allowed Adam22 to, um, well, it's out there, you can find it. And Trisha was also, of course, the former host of Frenemies with Ethan Klein. A joke, but you wanted to get in and get that cash grab. Who the fuck's gonna pay me to be on OnlyFans? A lot of people. Do you watch- Um, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know you do that. Uh, wait, what? <laughs> When you end a sentence, you go, um. <laughs> I literally have no idea what you're talking about. You go, a lot of people, um. <laughs> I definitely did. You did that right then. Like, no, definitely not. And I don't think it's because you're Jewish. There's lots um, of people. <laughs> I find you offensive, so. Um, you're not invited to my wedding. Um, yeah, I uh, I guess I didn't last too long. I'll remember not to come next <clears throat> week then. Um, in the same way that people like myself or Sensitive Society or a Cheeto create slop content for the YouTube drama audience, Dev Noodles did it for the tea community, making sure to post an eight minute long video every single day while wearing cat ears, glasses, and screaming into the microphone like a 2010 Minecraft YouTuber. I'm a cat in a Minecraft house. I'm a cat. He had 500,000 subscribers, so a pretty big channel and was averaging, you know, 100,000 to 200,000 views on his videos. So he had a very consistent viewership. So consistent, in fact, that he was actually a guest on the H3 podcast. Well, guys, last year, as you know, I had a co-host for the Steamies, uh, Trisha Paytas, who, by the way, is excluded but from all categories. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we do have a guest, though, one that uh, is beloved in the community, one that reports the facts, the news, the gossip, and all the drama, and all that with a cup of noodles. It's the one, the only, Dennis Deaf Noodles. <laughs> There you go. Welcome, Hello. Deaf. 
Well, thank you for having me. This is crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, he reports the facts and only the facts. He's a true American patriot. Dark Brandon approves of deaf noodles. Now, all this is cringe at worst, right? But it's not his presentation that people really took issue with back in the day. It's the lack of research and manipulation of the facts, even on cases he could have easily had a slam dunk on. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when I am gay. LeBron James. Scream if you love Super Mario 64. <laughs> In March of 2021, the vlog squad was going through a rough time. David Dobrik had been accused of contributing to a sexual assault when his friend and co-star Dirty Dom was accused. A girl named Hannah was claiming that Dirty Dom had assaulted her, and it sent David's entire business and brand into a tailspin. And he was, like, ostensibly at the time, one of the safest people on YouTube in terms of brands. He got sponsorships from big companies like Chipotle tier stuff, right? Pretty crazy. As a result, two members of the vlog squad came out with a video talking about how they felt, and also saying that contrary to what some people have said online, David Dobrik had not prevented them or anyone from speaking their mind about what actually happened. They weren't like threatened with legal action. They could say whatever they wanted. I just want to make it clear, like we've seen stuff saying like David hasn't allowed us to talk yeah. about it or we're legally not allowed to talk about it. And like, or like no one is telling us right now that we can talk about it. It's just can't. been a lot. <laughs> Based on this clip, you can very clearly hear them say David did not prevent us from speaking our mind. Anyway, folks, as David Sandcastle crumbled, the uh, vlog squad members Aaron and Carly ended up uploading a video addressing the situation. We have been getting a lot of comments and messages this past week about our involvement with the vlog squad. Um, and I just want to make it clear, like we've seen stuff saying like David hasn't allowed us to talk yeah. about it or we're legally not allowed to talk about it. And what is happening, folks? Is David Dobrik really relinquishing the death grip that he has on his cult? Vlog Squad members should wash their back and maybe not drink David's Kool-Aid for a few days. So what Def did here is a very clear mischaracterization of what was being said. He frames it as if this is some kind of cult being run, which, like, I don't want to defend or praise David Dobrik in particular. I don't really give a about him, okay? And this is a very complicated situation. I feel like it's not worth getting into the weeds here. But what you can definitively say, based on their testimony, is that he didn't prevent them from speaking out on the issue. They just didn't really want to comment too much on it because it's a complicated situation. Not only that, but his clipping was very selective and didn't give the full context these girls should have been allowed to give if you're going to make a claim in this ballpark that David Dobrik is running like an evil cult. Keep in mind, the media at this time was swinging very heavily at David, and there's a lot to criticize him for. So why did Def Noodles take this angle? Why did he characterize this? this this way. Well, because the public was against David and he thought he could get away with saying anything about him and receive no scrutiny, which is why he got away with incidents like this so long, because the audience he had accrued already was poised against his targets. So why would they look into it? Why would they give a f when Keemstar said that Shane Dawson doing blackface 15 years ago was not that big of a deal and that no one at the time had a problem with it, Def Noodles responded by saying, well, no, this one girl did call him out. Because clearly, if Keemstar says that blackface was okay when Shane Dawson was doing it, then obviously it must have been okay. There was literally no one calling out Shane at the time for his content. In addition to content creators doing blackface on YouTube, using slurs, and having characters based on stereotypes about people of color. By the way, Kim didn't say doing blackface is okay. He just said it wasn't that big of a deal. But if you actually look at the date of the video posted by Francesca Ramsey, who called Shane out, it was posted after Shane made his apology video for it. So it's not like people called him out and then he apologized. He apologized on his own. Never mind the fact that this is one video. And this apology was four years after Shane had actually done it. Did Def Noodles just not realize that being insanely edgy was par for the course on YouTube around 2010? I mean, he's even willing to leave out context or facts around the situation when he's defending someone he does like. Remember that whole Hassan Cracker discourse when he got banned on Twitch for being racist against white people, basically? That was the, that was the drama. Well, uh, Hassan's defense, and by extension, the way that Def Noodles defends him, is absolutely hilarious. On December 23rd, Drama Alert, presented by The Willie Mac Show, runs a story about Hassan being banned on Twitch for saying the word cracker, and upon his return to Twitch, he proceeds to list other slurs of a similar nature, and they play this clip. Hillbilly, pick, mayonnaise monkey, vanilla gorilla, and numerous other kinds of words. Or honky, whitey, numerous other kinds of words. Redneck. So we already know that Dennis is going to say this is slander, right? But the question is, how is it slander? Because it is objectively true. And by the way, here's a context. So if you consider yourself to be a woke person 11 months of, of the on Caucasian Let's variety, and you find yourself thinking, Wow, these guys are making a lot of good arguments. Why can't you just not be racist against the whites? Dude, it's so easy. Remember, Hoggy Woggy. At the heart of the argument is the reactionary stance that white people are a well-defined and often marginalized group of individuals. 
and also understand that you are further advocating to, I guess, ban different okay. words such as, uh, to my knowledge, these are not banned. Hillbilly, pick, mayonnaise monkey, vanilla gorilla, and numerous other kinds of words are honky, whitey, numerous other kinds of words, redneck, that are used in common vernacular. Okay? You want to ban the word Karen? Bet you feel foolish now, eh? Using a clip that's been purposely cut out of context to make it seem as though Hassan Piker is just willy-nilly saying a string of words that are used to refer to a white person instead of doing what he was actually doing in the video, which is describing words that are not currently banned on Twitch. You see, he wasn't saying slurs. He was describing slurs through the medium of directly saying them. If the clip had gone on for just a few more seconds, people would have noticed that Hassan Piker had also mentioned the word Karen, but that was conveniently left out of the clip because it would have upended the narrative. Dennis, are you trying to say that the word Karen cancels out slurs? Now, this is just a few examples. Maybe you're thinking, oh, well, it's not that bad. I mean, he's taking people out of context, but, you know, it's nothing It's nothing uh, super crazy for your typical, you know, T channel, right? But this is Def Noodles on YouTube, where, like myself, he's much more tame than he is on his Twitter account, which is where the real fun begins. You see, Def Noodles had a huge hatred of the vlog squad, so he posted this tweet. Who could have seen this coming? Jason Nash's alleged girlfriend, Rachel Valesco, also was a super fan, saying in a 2019 clip, Jason Nash, if you watch this, I'm crushing on you. Jason and Rachel were recently allegedly filmed together by paparazzi having a heated discussion in Jason's car. The implication he's making here is that this is wrong because she liked his videos before they dated or something. Keep in mind, she's 23 years old when she's dating Jason Nash. So what exactly is even the issue? But maybe this isn't enough for you, okay? Maybe you want to give Dennis some plausible deniability, be like, well, you know, beyond a reasonable doubt, maybe he was just reporting the facts. Well, all of that goes completely out the window with this next one. James Charles was accused in a parody video, which is clearly a parody, as marked in the hashtags as hashtag funny, hashtag meme, of messaging a young boy. Now, it came out around the time there were a lot of other allegations that weren't, you know, for parody purposes against James Charles. <laughs> So how did Def Noodles report on this? Who could have seen this coming? James Charles exposed by 14 year old boy who alleges James Charles reached out to him in Instagram DMs asking him how to add him on Snapchat. Boy informs James he's 14 and James replies, how about now? James commented on TikTok, which is from 2020. Here he is basically calling James Charles a file with the evidence that he's using being a parody video. Keep in mind, he didn't indicate that it was a parody video or anything. He wasn't like, this is satire or whatever, but keep the word satire in mind because it will come up a lot later. It's basically satire. And this is not the only time he did this with James Charles, both on Twitter and on his YouTube channel. He was using any and every piece of fake or real evidence to prove that James Charles was some kind of creep, even if the specific evidence he gathered fell flat on its face. I think he took every single one of the James Charles accusations and like affirmed it completely without, you know, because he did. This is the problem when you do breaking news content. And when it first comes out, if you jump on top of it, you run the risk of it being invalid. Cause this is making me sick, like just the way the image is on there. Uh, you run the risk of it being invalid information, and that's going to hurt your credibility. James Charles very well could be a very f***ed up person, but Def Noodles did a horrible job of proving that. And as a result, he hurt the public discourse. So people start talking about this, including Keemstar. And Keemstar is a bit of a stirrer, as we know. I need a toilet! My butt's gonna explode! My anus is losing control! Now, Keemstar, being the shit stirrer he is, ah! decides to tweet out this about Def Noodles. Def Noodles has allegedly groomed girls from ages 12 to 15. Big YouTuber source. Victims are scared of him and wish to stay anonymous, but may come forward soon. Now, Keemstar's reason for this is that Def Noodles did it to James Charles, so he shouldn't have a problem when someone does it to him. Well, he did. In fact, he ended up filing a lawsuit against Keemstar. When there is no doubt that he would be crying and begging for mercy if a multi-multi-millionaire like James Charles did the same thing to him. Because he would be like, oh, it's just a parody, guys. He got a taste of his own medicine. But he still had some goodwill from the community at this point. I mean, hey, it's Keemstar, right? Every Everybody hates Keemstar. Um, I personally think Keemstar is the GOAT. Uh, not for anything he's ever said, but uh, you know, he has pretty good dance moves. Not to mention he's dope on the mic.
but a lot of this goodwill went out the window with Papa Gut. Now, Dennis and Mr. McDonald's had a bit of a scuffle for a few months, and there's a lot that goes into it. The way Papa Gut explains it is that a channel called The Bee Family called a Roblox YouTuber a file rapist because he made a distasteful joke about their daughter. Killick, the Roblox YouTuber, was subsequently banned. New rabbit hole, let's go. So I've got the uh, Wikitubia article pulled up here. Very, very genius interpretation as always. On January 28th, 2022, the B family uploaded a video titled, Dear Killick, She's Only 15. The video shows Killick checking up on Gabriella's Instagram account and making sexual remarks about her, including referring to her being gang, also known as rape. Thanks for clarifying. I guess. While speaking to her brother Roberto, a 16-year-old gamer known as Mr. B, with whom he had a fight. On the same day, Killick uploaded a response titled Dear the B Family, The Truth, where Killick admitted that he was aware that his remarks were bad, very wrong, and insulting towards your daughter. He detailed his feud with Gabriella's brother Roberto, accusing him of hate raiding his live stream. According to Killick, the two had interacted on several occasions and had insulted each other's family. He further accused Roberto of harassing him by continually entering his streams, claiming that the comments were retaliation. He apologized again for his comments, which he he said he made before he realized Gabriella's age. On January 30th, 2022, Killick posted another video titled, My Apology to Gabriella B in my response to the B Family video. He denied that his reference to gang was a reference to calling the allegation crazy and accusing the B Family of misinterpreting his remarks. He further accused them of disseminating misinformation by claiming he was 19 at the time. The B Family released a video titled, Let Me Speak, the next day, in which Roberto accused Killick of creating all this drama on his channel, and Gabriella said she felt targeted by Killick's statements. You don't have the right to objectify me just because I'm a girl, she remarked. Now, Papa Gut had a lot of problems with this B Family situation because of how the accusations were made. He basically saw it as ridiculous to call a 17-year-old file and lie about him being 19 because he was trash talking someone over the internet is it appropriate no given the circumstances i don't care okay especially since he was reading through the things and one of them said like oh happy birthday to my big brother so he actually assumed that the door that the girl was older than him that's neither here nor there so they turned that into this predator file he already goes into the over sexualization philia language of a 15 year old child okay here we go. Like, you feel me? You, you get it down. Like, she's getting balls in her jaw. Like, like yo, mama getting smacked. They overaged him to 19, even though his, uh, his. Instagram and one of the posts said he was 17 and his Twitter, which is the only thing with his post actively like easily available, said he was 16 and they railed against this kid. From our understanding, this person is 19 years old, so he is considered an adult. It was insane. It was insane, okay? A 17-year-old making a joke to a 16-year-old boy that's f***ing with him about a girl he didn't even know was 15. It's insane to call him. You say it's inappropriate to call him a pro They called him a f they, they heavily insinuated he was like a predator f You can see here the way he sees it is it's like uh, trying to ruin a 17-year-old's life over internet trash talk, which from everything I can gather seems to be a relatively fair interpretation of events unless there's something big that I'm missing. But Dennis, Def Noodles, did not see it that way. Or maybe he didn't see anything because he just uncritically reported their video and supported everything that was said about Killick. Mr. McDonald's here calls him out for this and actually manages to get him into a call. The comments on the uh, top of this debate video on YouTube reads, should be labeled Papa Gut accidentally helps Def Noodles expose himself as an idiot. And the rest of the comments are about the same. This is literally a case of an adult trying to explain sh to a child. Deaf Noodles is what happens when you think you're smarter than you actually are. So what happened? Well, Deaf Noodles got butt hurt. Mother got famous on TikTok for joking about 14 year olds, then gets offended someone jokes about him. But you know, he was right. I shouldn't have said that. I should have instead said he makes himself so small in his videos to hide the fact he looks like a file. Papa Gut is not a file, keep in mind. But he is very fat, which is undeniably way worse. Go on a diet, you fat bitch. I mean, on one hand, you can say it's like funny to call someone, you know, they say they look like a so they look like a creep. I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with that um, in, in a vacuum, right? Especially if it's your friend. I get that it's used as an insult. It can be funny, but that's not what this is. He specifically qualifies it with, well, he's not really joking about those jokes he made on TikTok. And this is what he looks like. He, he must be a right? I mean, there's really no defense Dennis can make in this situation. I've constantly called out predatory content creators. It's a big part of my content. When we first talked, I gave you a tremendous amount of charitability, but it's gone now. The reality is, is you're worthless. You're a worthless content creator. Remember Tana Mongoose, the girl who iDubs dropped a nuclear bomb on? He fucked me with a toothbrush. He fucked me with a toothbrush. A toothbrush. Oh, oh, oh. 
Okay, well, she posted a picture at one point of herself with a new necklace, and it has this little cross on it. And this is what Dennis writes about it. Who could have seen this coming? Some noticing Tana Mojo's new necklace has what appears to be an iron cross at the top of a marijuana leaf. According to the ADL, the iron cross is adopted by neo-Nazis and white supremacists. However, can it be determined to be a hate symbol when without the swastika? Shut your up. Who actually was noticing this on her thing and like curious about this? Who actually thought that Tana Mojo, one of the most like famous, I mean, kind of like, you know, ratchet, woke, whatever the f you want to call her, YouTubers of all time, what makes you think that she is going to be wearing Nazi memorabilia? Was anybody actually even saying this or did you just have a slow news day? On a side note, if that is real, then Tana, be sure to hit my line. Please call me on my cell phone. And this is literally the tip of the iceberg with this guy. It gets so much worse. Life ruination. It's a topic that is generally easy to get behind hating on YouTube. Unless the person in question is like a murderer or something or they did something to a kid, in which case obviously everyone would agree they probably deserve to have their life destroyed. But in general, we're always against, I don't know, like doxing or taking away people's financial opportunities or stuff like that, right? Typically that's like something we don't go after on YouTube as commentary channels. It's off limits. But Dennis didn't seem to have a problem with some of these things at all. Going back to his seething hatred of David Dobrik, or maybe the fact that he was like a head making a load of money off of uh, <laughs> basically spreading whatever about whoever he wanted. He openly called for Chipotle to no longer sponsor David as well as James Charles. Keep in mind, as Nicholas DiOrio noted in his own video, this is before the Insider article came out that wreaks total havoc on the entire vlog squad. Dennis was always desperate for blood. When Keemstar pissed off K-pop fans, Dennis posted on Twitter implying he was racist against Asian people and also pulling some random quote from a K-pop fan saying that they wanted Keem's sponsors dropped. If this was anyone else reporting all of this, I probably wouldn't care, right? But it's Def Noodles. We know his history at this point, and you can tell because of how he acts what he wants to happen. He hates Keemstar. He wants him to make no money. Do you guys remember John Swan? He was a big up-and-coming commentary channel a few years ago, and then he got his ass eaten when he lied about this whole dream drama that happened. Kind of an idiot in that regard, uh, but it was a long time ago, you know? Anyway, when drama was going on with him, Def Noodles called him an alt-right YouTuber. Now, what do you think about when you hear the word alt-right? You probably think about someone like Richard Spencer. What is your little it's uh, Pepe's become kind of a symbol. Or maybe Nick Fuentes. No e-girls. Who's got the clip? No e-girls. Never! Realistically, it's a pretty heavy accusation to say that someone is alt-right, especially if they're not really political. It comes with a lot of connotations of racism and anti-Semitism. A modern-day fascist is what most people think of when they hear this term. So why did Dennis call him that, like, 20 different times? Dream exposed an alt-right YouTuber. How's that a joke? Dream exposing an alt-right YouTuber. What's the punchline? Well, you see... It's because John Swan committed the grave sin of disrespecting neo-pronouns. Now, I personally can completely see his point. I mean, as, as someone who exists outside of the gender paradigm, as you can tell, I exist outside the gender paradigm, uh, and I go by the pronouns Zer and Zim only. I do, I do see the point he's making, honestly. Like, John Swan is, in fact, Mussolini 2, Electric Boogaloo. Worst of all, he's Australian. Let it go, dogs, let's go! Straight up animal abuse. Disgusting. When further called out on this, or called out for the time he called Augie RFC, someone who flirts with fascism, he says, That's a f joke. My audience got it. The only people who got offended were the people I was making fun of. You should unfollow me immediately if you don't get my sense of humor, because you have no business gatekeeping jokes. I'm giving you a choice before I block you. Do you all remember Sky Jackson? Sky is a former Disney Channel star with a pretty big following online. And a few years ago, she got into some sh because she started tweeting out people's doxes because they made edgy jokes. Keep in mind, many of these people were in middle and high school. In late May and early June of 2020, Jackson made several posts to her social media accounts, primarily Twitter, requesting her followers to share examples of racism and reveal their personal information, including phone numbers, addresses, emails, and information about their schools. In one instance, the name, number, and address of a 13-year-old boy was posted in screenshots to her Twitter feed, seen below, which has since been removed for violating the platform's rules. And this was a very contentious topic at the time because uh, psychopaths on Twitter enjoyed seeing children get doxxed, and people who aren't psychopaths didn't enjoy it. One such example was tweeted by Twitter user Elijah Daniel on June 5th, 2020, who said, OMG, what Sky Jackson is doing on Twitter right now is what we call modern art, receiving over 51,000 likes and 5,900 retweets. You guys are the reason why racism is coming back in a big way. Let it be known. You contributed to this. On June 15th, 2020, Twitter user ZaptiE, whoa, the f that's me, criticized the actions of Jackson and her followers and stated, this f Psychopath spends her time doxing high schoolers for saying guacamole penis. I cannot make this shit up. Receiving over 4,300 likes and 700 retweets. Sky was going out on a limb to dox children for making edgy comments on Instagram. Pretty ridiculous. 
And you want to know who absolutely loved it? None other than the man of the hour. Here we are once again, addressing more allegations. Sky Jackson is making Twitter history right now, exposing racists for the past five hours nonstop. How noble. Chung Shu, Konishiwa, Grandmaster. When commentators make jokes about sensitive subjects, they are flirting with fascism. That, you know, that, that, uh, the disenfranchising minorities, jokes of hinge misogyny, and uh, flirting with fascist ideas. But when Def Noodles does it, apparently he's just posting a parody, right? When he posts a parody allegation as if it's real alongside other allegations, that's just satire, that's parody. Everyone understands it. I don't know about you guys, but the only fascist I would ever flirt with is Rage After Storm. You see, this may be confusing. Def Noodles is a commentary channel. He reports on serious issues. How can he just be joking all the time? Well, it turns out it confused a lot of other people too, which is why Vulture wrote an article about him titled, Def Noodles is testing the limits of YouTube satire. Now, I'm someone who likes to uh, make jokes, I like to meme around, and sometimes that includes spreading harmless misinformation. The YouTube commentator Turkey Tom tweets out, can't wait to see his take, showing a picture of a video from Penguin Zero, who's also known as Moist Critical, titled Massive Israel Drama. Now, this image was fake, but so many people were tricked by it that the tweet actually ended up getting a community note put on it that says, the title of the video has been digitally altered. The real video talks about a TV series and is called Biggest Waste of Money Ever. Moist Critical then quote tweets this and says, Most people in the comments don't even bother to take two seconds to see if this was real. Classic. Turkey Tom then responds to him with a quote tweet of his own, a picture of a laughing emoji in the caption, when I purposely spread misinformation over the internet. But these are, like I said, mostly harmless jokes. There's no real victim. They're clearly re- the problem comes when you chip into a serious allegation with a post you claim is satire, but does nothing but further the allegation, especially when you've already been making serious allegations in the past. It muddies the water of what the truth is. Like what he did with James Charles with that troll post, or what he did with John Swan. The satire excuse gives you a perfect get out of jail free card when you act like a head by just straight up lying about someone. And it was getting to the point where people were making videos about how poor of a defense this really is. You don't just get to say that and then claim that it's satire if anybody criticizes you for it. You should instead just say that you're going to give your opinion and then you will be criticized for your opinion, but at least you won't look like a total bitch for saying that you're not going to share your opinion in the first place, and it's all just a joke. Jesse David Fox, for Vulture, writes, Definitely is a test to see if satire, irony, and paradox can work on the internet, and the results are decidedly mixed. In fairness, Phytosa doesn't exactly make it easy. When people criticize him, it's because they believe he is hiding behind his character. They'll point out that Phytosa says he doesn't care about the goings-on he covers, and yet he spends 16 hours a day following every movement of fringe celebrities. Or they'll point out how he'll sometimes note that stories are serious, even though he says the point is that it's all irrelevant. And and this is the crux of the problem. His jokes are not about how ridiculous the idea of the accusation is. It's not poking fun at the culture. It's just lying. There is no real joke. He just slanders people when it's convenient, while also covering serious stories on the same page. His explanation? Well, it's all satire. But when it clearly was satire for Keemstar when he was posting it in retaliation to Def Noodles, Def Noodles decides to sue him. Like, he can clearly recognize this is a difference that exists with other people, but with him, never. So he starts to really lose his footing in the community at this point. His good standing is going away, people can't really trust him. So now he runs to make the serious accusation that his critics are racist. Def Noodles was so ass mad that people called him out on that, that he actually went on quite the tirade, implying that my friends and I disenfranchise minority creators. We're racist for calling him sensitive for overreacting to an exposed video by some random kid. He then presented the image of himself as some immigrant who's overcome tremendous obstacles in his life to get where he is today, and he won't let racists like Nick DiOrio, Augie, Bo Blacks, Tipster, wait, oh, wait a minute, Edwin, oh, oh shit. Some of the group Def Noodles was calling racists are literally Mexican themselves. Regardless though, the obvious racism won't stop Def Noodles as he plans to stand up for himself against it. If you couldn't already tell, this attack is completely unfounded and ridiculous. Def Noodles got upset that he was getting clowned on and decided to try and paint all of his detractors as some of the worst labels possible to invalidate this criticism. This is probably the biggest move I've ever seen anyone pull in my three years on the website, and it's the beginning stages of a larger pattern of behavior that we see from Dennis in regards to how he tried to pile on John Swan with his slimy timed alt-right allegation. On one hand, he will defend his accusation of racism, of fascist flirting wholeheartedly, and at the same time, he's also being hyperbolic somehow, when he says that his critics disenfranchise minorities, which is completely These, these are all hyperbolic 
and they're all within the character, but there's truth to every single thing that's said. This is someone grasping at the straws of what satire is and miserably failing. One, he's not being funny. Two, He's an idiot. Due to all these controversies, Dennis's career was taking a bit of a hit. If it was one of these, he may have been fine, even two or three. I mean, you just keep trucking, you make content. If he didn't f up again, it would have been fine. But this was months straight of him getting wrong, getting stories wrong, pissing off other YouTubers by basically victimizing them. I mean, people were pissed off at him because they were legitimately wrong by the way he used his platform. And simultaneously, he never changed. He never made an effort to change. His ego was too big. He thought he would just be fine because he's Dennis. He's Dev Noodles. He's a satire genius, comedy genius. He just stuck with what he was doing and people started to actually notice and they didn't want to watch him. His videos were getting 100,000 views on average and that went to, you know, 10,000, maybe 20,000 to just a few thousand in a short amount of time. A fall off only seen in very, very rare cases. Even some of the most hated people online still pull very good viewership. But Def Noodles had an ace up his sleeve. Comedy. Stand up has always been his true passion. Before the pandemic, Dennis was a comedian struggling to make it in LA and experimenting on YouTube. Here he says, I feel like there's an idea on the internet of what comedy is, but I don't feel like a lot of people really know what comedy is like. A lot of people who have the strongest opinions about comedy haven't been in a comedy club maybe ever in their lives. There are a few commentators who like to say that comedy is dead and this and that, and to them it's saying racial slurs and using the Confederate flag. I'm like, how is that a punchline? You see, Def Noodles understood comedy. He, like Brendan Schaub, is a comedy genius. He's been in the room. He's talked to the big dogs like Ethan Klein and he was about to show the world just how much understanding he truly had. In his downtime from YouTube, Def Noodles had opened up his own comedy club in downtown Los Angeles. Users on the H3 subreddit speculated it was probably very expensive. It's actually on Sunset Boulevard, being only a six minute drive from Hollywood. And to this day, you can rent it out for $134 an hour. So this is not a cheap place. It was previously his office and I don't know why you need a separate office building from your apartment if you're making YouTube commentary videos like I get if you're having a full production it makes sense but like bro you're literally sitting in your room why do you need an office but anyway now he was using a big part of this office space for his comedy career but he didn't exactly put a lot of effort into making it a very nice place with a nice presentation okay this is not like Joe Rogan's mothership type thing it's uh it's a room with chairs you've got a crooked projector all off access Half of it ain't hitting the screen. The sound doesn't work. You got these insane lighting rigs where they've taken eight or nine uh, tripods and extended them down. They're using, you know, the cheapest Amazon video lights you could find. No air conditioning. So he's in the back of this rinky-dink office. No AC. 120 degrees, seats 30 people, but he's cramming 50 or 60 in there. So from the jump, it's not really set up for people to have a good time. But Dennis had big plans. From his new venue, Dennis began hosting roast battles, events where the participants roast each other in front of a real audience, which would also be broadcast to his YouTube channel, live streamed for everybody to see. He had been bragging on social media for months and months about how big of a deal it would be, how this would be an amazing event for him, the next step in his career. Unfortunately for him, the first super roast battle was an absolute disaster. The first 27 minutes of the show are just dead air with the audience bored out of their minds as they cycle through random rap music. Now, the whole point of a roast, keep in mind, like what they do with celebrities, is to gather all of that person's embarrassing moments and just mock them for it, right? Their personal failures, their weird quirks, stuff like that. But in this case, Dennis got a bunch of random comedians who didn't know each other, are very like, they're barely even comedians, they just go to open mics. And he got these people to roast each other, meaning that all they could really do is comment on each other's appearance because they didn't know each other beforehand. And if the comments about their appearance were funny, it would be one thing. Like, that would be genuinely cool, you know? I don't, I don't care about this whole, like, oh, that's a low blow. If somebody's fat, you can make a funny fat joke. If somebody has a cool haircut, you can make a funny joke about their cool haircut. You know what this is? This is my new fucking haircut. You know what that means? I'm getting some fucking pussy tonight. But that's not what happened, and it resulted in a lot of secondhand embarrassment from the audience. But I, I just met this motherfucker, but he's the only person I've seen with a canko on his neck. <laughs> oh. Oof. I don't know why you're wearing... Uh, I don't know why you're wearing uh, shoes to relax, bro. What are you relaxing from? You haven't moved in days. I know you're not coming at me with that neckline of the shirt looking like you stretched that shit for miles. What even is this, bro? Is this like just the... Oh, you have on a vest in the summertime. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you... Oh, that's just crossing a line immediately. He just goes up and starts touching him. Oh, like I don't, I don't even know where Death Noodles would find someone like this. It's, that's so yucky. 
Like, he's not even roasting. Now he's just going up there and, like, caressing him. Ooh. I can see everything going on. All right, never mind. Uh, it's called a cock, buddy. You teed if you didn't have that tummy there. All right. Oh. That would have worked if half of you weren't fat as Oh, he ain't got no pussy in a long time. No, 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 no. It's been a while for him. He is right upset. Like, I have expected him to just go out in the crowd and start throwing hands, like just absolutely ripping on the audience, just beating them down. This is very bad, but it truly gets kicked into high gear once Dennis's set begins. It's Deaf Noodles versus this one female comedian. Comedian. She's not very funny. Shocking, I know. And it quickly becomes clear that Dennis is not a very good comedian either. In fact, he is worse than her, and she she is not funny. So. If by comparison, she is hilarious, you are truly like negative, negative comedy, negative comedy points for you, my good sir. Burt Kreischer would never, never approve. You wearing that dare shirt because you're like, uh, I dare you to run away from me. <laughs> <laughs> so I stopped watching after his joke. It'll be new territory for me soon. Carrot Top called, he wants his look back. And that's when I stopped. So now this is all new. Wait, I'm wet. Hey. Cat got your tongue? No, you Pussy just- Pussy got your tongue? Nah. You look like you woke up in a what? dumpster. <laughs> like, wow. this is what happens at, like, a middle school lunch table. Like, like this is just <laughs> awful. Ugh. If you don't Tony shut the fuck- <laughs> <laughs> Why? Are you up here? Why are you up here? I'm looking at your teeth, because I just can't. <laughs> it reminds me- You ever see that movie, Ed? With a horse, with the big teeth? I don't have that big a teeth. I mean, you're just like fishing for something now. You look really? like emo shaggy. Emo shaggy. <laughs> that's Come on, Death Noodles. You, low key. <laughs> you got this. I, I don't understand how you have holes on your knees, on your pants. Oh. Because you don't go down, right? <laughs> oh, I do. Yeah. Oh my. And the entire thing is like this. It's just painfully unfunny. It is cringe. Charlie here, when he reacts to it, he calls it a middle school roast type thing, but it's honestly below that. At least we were calling people slurs in middle school. At the very, very least, okay? This is just horrible. He even asks the girl on stage to make out with him at one point, and it is like a joke, but it's like, it's not really hitting, you know? Huh? Hey, you got Don't dimples spray. too. That's what's up. Yeah. You want to make out? No. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> That's why I asked. Oh. <laughs> Now that was truly awesome. And while the event itself was a flop, the reaction the critical made was anything but. It wasn't even a mid video for him. It got 4 million views. That's a very well performing video even for his channel. And Dennis now was not only the worst commentary channel on YouTube, but his other avenue that he said would be so good, right? He said he'd be so good at comedy. He understands comedy unlike other YouTubers. It was an objective failure. Seeing this reaction, Dennis decided to respond to it on his channel with a very sarcastic response, basically acting like he didn't actually care about what he was being made fun of for. While at the same time lamenting and how much he had ruined his career. I can't keep my dick in my pants when it comes to creating problems and destroying my career. I just need to fuck it. My career. I need to fuck it up. I mean. Dennis was having a very hard time coming to terms with the fact that his video sucked and he was not funny. The closest thing that came to an accusation from me, I guess, is when I compared the roast battle to an act of terrorism. Which, I think there's a good argument to be made there. This was so funny. Bad. The two biggest claims to his entire identity, the things he thought he was good at, were being mercilessly mocked by the entire internet. His ego is crumbling. You can see it in real time. I did indeed get banned on Twitch after a gay comedian made a gay joke, and I got massive backlash for it on Twitter as a result. This part's a little disingenuous because he seems to believe he got banned because of people mass reporting him and having a big backlash about it. But that's not really the case. What happened is Deaf Noodles was roasting against another comedian and she just randomly shouted a slur for no reason. There wasn't like a joke leading up to it. There wasn't like a punchline or any context to it. She just shouted a slur, which is against Twitch's rules. So whether or not people made a big fuss about it on Twitter wouldn't have mattered. He was going to get banned for that. This video that Dennis posted where he responds to Critical cost him 3,000 subscribers, and that's for a few reasons. Firstly, his fans initially subscribed to him to see him report on drama, not to see him cry about his comedy event failing and not doing well. The second reason being that he cried about his comedy event not doing well, which nobody wants to 
see. It's not very becoming of anyone. And what the critical video also did was it put him back in the spotlight where some of his fans went and found out about Dennis's story, about his history, about his shady past being exposed, and that was put to a much wider audience. You know, the Def Noodles drama from the previous commentary community stuff with Nicholas Diorio had kind of died down by the time the comedy club thing came around. If I had a penny for every time Dennis got personally offended for being criticized for his stupid actions, I'd have enough money to have my own terrible comedy event. He had been placed under a much higher, higher level of scrutiny, and everything he did from now on would definitely have a lot of eyes on it. It made things so much worse when it came time for the second Super Roast battle, which was, uh... Well, it was a success in a way, uh, <laughs> I guess you could say. So now I have to introduce someone who I doubt many of you are familiar with, and I didn't really even know who he was before I was getting into the Def Noodles lore. Mike David, the host of Red Bar Radio. Now, Red Bar is a fan-funded show that talks about all manner of comedians and e-celebs, with Mike himself having a big distaste of people like Ethan Klein and Def Noodles. Mike tried to warn Def Noodles that attracting Ethan Klein's audience could be deadly because if he up if he did something edgy they would immediately drop him right they're not really there for him as a person they're there to see him tear apart other people in the most brutal way possible even lie about them and these kinds of people are not the kind of people you want watching you because they're going to turn on you in an instant be very careful around the clients every week i would see deaf noodles not 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 reporting on the crimes of the client so mike devised a plan right he devised a plan to get involved with deaf noodles posting so much horrible content and being a bad comedian being eaten alive by his own audience, he wanted to get in the thick of things a little bit. He wanted to influence things. And he pulled off some serious puppet master shit. He explains this on his show. He's like, what if I promoted the tickets to the second roast battle to my audience to fill up the room with my own people who don't like Dennis. Not only that, he employed the use of one of his goons by the name of Salvo. Now, Salvo is kind of a degenerate in his own right, and his his kind of small career at the time kind of fell apart after this, but he did genuinely do some funny shit here, and I, I wouldn't take that away from him, okay, as much as I don't love Salvo. He shows up in a limo with the intent to derail the entire thing to give Def Noodles a taste of his own medicine. So this was great to see. Patojo! Oh, it's silent. It's silent, Dennis! Make some noise! If you're here for Red Bar or Salmon Red, Red Bar! We're so shaking at home, dog. Oh, thank eyes. you. That's We're all we want. Look at that. You know, we're sitting at home. We didn't know what was going to happen. A lot of the comedians are hiding in the back because they don't know what to expect. They're weirded out. Def Noodles did talk Salvo publicly before this, and so we knew he was coming. He kind of challenged him and brought it on. But some of the other comedians didn't exactly know what they were getting into. They wanted an easy, low-stakes roast battle with a comedian, and they wanted to get paid. And they didn't exactly get that. Make some noise, but then it's not being funny. hey -o! God damn! Yemo wears glasses so people won't think he's threatening. Evan wears glasses so people don't know how he's so, that he's stupid. It's very... <laughs> All right. Uh, no, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. One person laugh. comic. Good job, Dennis. Shut the fuck up. I just want to apologize for, for the last battle. This is, this is the beauty of roast battles, folks. So the situation is, a lot of y'all is trolls, right? A lot of y'all yeah. is trolls. If you were here, there'd be nobody in the crowd. I don't know where Dennis got these people or what he was expecting from them, but the the roasts, as always, are just horrible. Like it's not even it's not even like awkward funny, like I don't know, the office or something like that, right? It's not that level. It's just bad. It's just straight up cringe. They don't even seem like they're trying or want to. So at one point, Dennis goes backstage to basically hide from the fact that the entire crowd hates him and wants to see him fail. And Salvo does some showmanship. He gets up on stage. The entire crowd is chanting, "Red bar, red bar, red bar." And Dennis does the dumbest thing possible. This is a pivotal moment in Dennis's career, and the perfect thing that everyone needed to show that he was a loser, a horrible comedian, and someone who couldn't take criticism, who couldn't take the mockery despite dishing it out. There's nothing people love more than a commentary channel who makes their living off of criticizing and making fun of other people, who when criticized themselves, can't take it. It's like a beautiful, beautiful thing when people get it, they're like, oh, no, no, no. When he was being made fun of, he acted like a little baby, he shoved someone. And not only that, when Salvo tried to swing at him, 
Dennis's security stepped in for him to like prevent him from, you know, getting in there. They touched up on him. It's just a horribly embarrassing display. I mean, if you're going to ignore everything else, if you're going to punch someone, you got to be at least willing to fight them right after that. And on top of that, taking into account, you know, the greater situation here, the greater point, the whole point of the event was that people would come on stage to roast Dennis. And when he didn't like how it was going, he freaked the f out. Now, at the time, Def Noodles tried to justify this because Salvo would not chill, but like it or not, Def was the one who incited uh, violence in the first place, and he invited the roast itself, which caused his own violence, so he just has to take the L here, okay? There's no way around it. Red Bar was watching from home the entire time, enjoying it as it went down. Salvo gets thrown out, and Def claims he had to leave right away because he had, like, booked a spot at the LA Comedy Club in Vegas. He was like, oh, I'm a real comedian. I gotta go. I gotta go right now. I got stuff to do. Turns out he wasn't booked there. He claimed he was booked at the LA Comedy Club in Las Vegas. They called the LA Comedy not Club. Us. All the people, not us, but everybody called. Nobody's heard of him there. He's not booked. Now, Def Noodles had already been mocked before, okay? But now people regarded him as an absolute clown, a lol cow, even, as many internet skibbity heads would say. He had reached the point of no return in the eyes of pretty much all of the public. His supporters, if there were any before this point, they were now gone. All of this happened in September 2022, and we can see that by this point, his channel was already not doing well. He hadn't been uploading the terrible content that paid the bills and instead was constantly posting about the drama that involved him. The original VOD of the second roast battle itself, which was watched by millions of people on the Penguin Zero channel, probably hundreds of thousands on Red Bar Radio, every commentary channel reacted to this and cringed at it at the time. The VOD that was talked about so much only got 28,000 views which is less than a third of the typical views that Dennis was getting beforehand. People didn't even want to watch Dennis's videos anymore. They didn't care to see him. They cared to see other people make fun of him. They just wanted to see him fall off. And fall off he did. War. War never changes. Since the dawn of humankind when our ancestors first discovered the killing power of rock and bone, blood has been spilled in the name of everything. From God, to justice, to simple psychotic rage. Armed conflict has always been horrible, no matter the weapon. But World War I was a game changer. The introduction of semi-automatic weapons, machine guns, gasoline-powered vehicles like tanks, modern concepts of artillery and bombs, fundamentally changed the way war was conducted. And for that, we paid a price. The constant bombardment of artillery and machine guns created a nightmarish wasteland between the enemy's lines, littered with tree stumps and snarls of barbed wire. In battle, soldiers had to charge out of the trenches and across no man's land into a hail of bullets and shrapnel and poison gas. They were easy targets, and casualties were enormously high. By the end of 1914, after just five months of fighting, the number of dead and wounded exceeded 4 million men. This place is precisely where Dennis's channel was in 2024. No one even wanted to touch him. By October of 2022, he could barely even break 10,000 views on his channel. By December of 2023, sometimes his videos wouldn't even crack 10 views. Also, side note, please talk about Deaf Noodles. I don't want to talk about Deaf. I don't want to talk about Deaf Noodles, you know? The dude's been getting like absolutely dogpiled by everybody. I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. Part of the problem here is that being called out for all of his actions basically broke his spirit. He clearly didn't have the drive anymore to make real videos for whatever reason. So his main channel became the home of bait content. He would post short videos with whatever random title he could come up with, baiting whoever was left there to pay attention to him. In most cases, it was really not working. Meanwhile, he had started a new channel to talk about the same area of content that someone like Critical would calling out Neon, Sneeko, and even venturing into hip-hop drama. But none of the videos really popped off, at least at the time, with his viewership sitting at around a thousand views per video for months on end on this new channel. These videos weren't particularly good either. They were the same low-quality slop he was posting before, just for a new area of YouTube, one that already hated him. I don't understand. It doesn't seem like he's making any active improvements on how to engage with his content. What is this? It doesn't seem like he's trying to actually like, oh, listen, oh, I'm not really prepared for this one. So what should I do? Oh, five days later, I'll make another video uh, where I'm also not prepared. It's like, oh, that makes a lot of sense, man. The reason that he's not like popular anymore is his own fault. Not like that. Oh, you know, you, you, you caused this to happen. No, it's just like he's decided not to get his shit together and start like actually making content that people want to see. Like I see he has two channels where he just like shit posts here. He's got a view surge. 
uh, because of the Sony V2 video, but these numbers are like sub 1000, like generally speaking. Um, this is view surge is just because people like looked at him for once after a long time. This is his new channel where I don't know, he just not doing particularly well. You know, I, I think. Hi, folks, somebody amazing. Today we're talking about. Uh, incredible. Meanwhile, he had basically become a meme to his biggest former collaborator and champion, Ethan Klein. Uh, most, uh, hmm. let's see, best YouTube drama news coverage was Def Noodles, who uh, had quite a year. He loves me. Some categories are cursed, <laughs> and apparently that's one of them. I, I wanted to see what I was getting into today, and I watched last year's, and I saw that you had Smart. him as a co-host. Yeah. If that's any predictor from your guy, where you guys will go from here, not good. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I almost didn't show up after I saw that. Yeah. I was like, this is what we are now? But no, I, so I, realized, I realized that we had to come in and clean up the mess that's going on over here. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Need you're help? Used to, you're used to cleaning up messes. Mm -hmm. Usually involves, you know, heavy machinery, but... To... All right, enough, <laughs> enough. Enough of that. One funny side note during this time is that John Jones came to his comedy club and the footage from that night was later used to uh, kind of jokingly prove that John Jones is gay. Yes, that John Jones, UFC fighter, uh, wife beater John Jones, that guy, uh, you know, champion of the world. He went to Def Noodles Comedy Club, uh, which is, I mean, awesome. John Jones is a deeply closeted homosexual man. Meanwhile, on Def's Reddit account, he was making some very, very concerning posts. I am a manipulative attention-seeking Help me, guys. I'm a manipulative attention-seeking and I can't help myself. I'm addicted to attention. I need it all the time. I don't know who to turn to to fix this. I'm starting to become like Boogie2988 minus the fat. Thank goodness. Please, please, if anyone has any source of advice out there, please help. I don't know what to do with myself and I feel awful now that I realize this. No, this is real. At least I'm not fat. Also, don't care if people like me or not. People liking me never actually put money in my bank account. So I guess he just wants attention. I think I'm going to kill myself. I don't see any other way out. No, I wasn't. I hated myself more than I hate myself now, and that's all that really matters. I hated myself so much I tried to kill myself three times in the last two years. I did Irrelevant News. Since I ended Irrelevant News, I only tried to kill myself twice, so that's an upgrade. Jesus. These were very disturbing, as he was essentially begging his fans to convince him out of phantom taxing himself. The guy had lost everything he had on YouTube. It was all his fault and he knew it, which is the worst part. He was looking for the easy way out. Eventually, he wiped both of his channels and changed his profile picture to a black screen, leading many to believe he was about to do something irreversible. Thankfully, he apparently told a another YouTuber, collaborator of his, that he was okay, but that was basically all the information we got here. You know, there was a lot of speculation at the time around if Def Noodles would be okay. But as of now, he's left the internet and we don't know if he's coming back anytime soon. You know, as fun as it is to shit on Def Noodles, I don't really want to do that. Outside of the giant video, I just spent doing it, I mean. What the f*** am I saying? But I, I guess the conclusion I'd like to communicate here is that I don't actually think that Dennis is an evil person in, in the respect that he, like, was always a bad guy. He's just a f dumbass and an asshole, okay? And he bought his own hype and thought he could get away with whatever he wanted against certain people because in his mind, they were evil. So anything he did was justified, right? David Dobrik is a person, therefore it's okay to get his sponsors dropped, right? James Charles might be guilty of these other accusations, so it's okay to lie about him here. Papa Gut made a bad joke, so I can call him a file. Augie, RFC, and Nick DiOrio, and John Swan, they criticized me, and they make edgy jokes, therefore they're fascists, so whatever I do against them is justified. Like, he, he really, he really was a moron. Realistically, I think he's a very good, like, cautionary tale. Lying about people and slandering people uh, is very wrong, and if you do it, you will always get caught in the long run, right? Like, it will bite you in the ass. Hiding behind satire as an excuse is also wrong. Uh, that's, that's, that's really dumb. It doesn't work as a defense. It's not going to help you long term. And um, also, like, stand-up comedy is really hard. It takes years to perfect. So you need to lose your ego about it and not act like you know comedy better than other people. The biggest comedians in the world, people start to hate them when they posture about comedy as an art form, right? Because it's pretentious. And the point of comedy is to not take things too seriously. But Dennis, like, he was like a philosopher of comedy. And it, it just, it looked gay. It did. Just because you're a silly YouTube guy doesn't mean that you're funny. I think if Dennis really, really wanted, he could come back to YouTube, honestly. And if he made really good content, I think he would be fine. And this is something I firmly believe about pretty much anyone online. Like, if you make really good content, you can be fine. But the problem is that with everything he did, he had to atone for his actions first. And through him participating in life ruination for other people, he basically got his career ruined and it's it's all his fault. If he were to come back, it would take time, it would take months, maybe even a year or years, but 
I, I'm a firm believer in the idea that if you atone for your actions, if you apologize for what you did wrong, you don't do it again, you show genuine change, and if you make good content people want to watch, then they will watch it. They will, honestly. Um, but if he ever makes the same mistakes again, if he ever even gets close to that territory, he's going to have a rough time. Hopefully, he's doing some serious soul searching in his absence from the online world. And uh, hopefully, if he ever comes back, he'll be a much better person. Or maybe he'll continue to be a head. I don't know. Thanks for watching this video uh, that I made. I will see you all tomorrow in the next video that I make. Goodbye. Also, I'm not talking about it. Uh.